Is that all right? Till 1215. Character study for the month is Peter. Look at the New Testament Gospels. Study his life. We're going to pull from different portions and passages of Scripture, and we're going to talk about Peter, and we're going to see ourselves in Peter's life. Somebody say, draw a line. Let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 29 through 32. When you got it, shout amen. I want to back up a little bit. Uh, actually, I won't. I'll just talk about it. Verse 29, are you there? Bible says this. Now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, tell somebody, as soon as they left church, tell somebody they had to draw a line. Ain't that just like the devil? As soon as you leave church, you got to draw a line. As soon as they came out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Tell somebody, draw a line. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. At evening when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Tell somebody, draw a line. Hope they had a big porch. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases. He cast out many demons. He did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Verse 30 again. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever and they told him about her at once so he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up in a couple of prayer meetings later uh, the new members class had to happen first they had to go through new believers class the text says immediately the fever left her Look at somebody on your left and right. Say these words with me. Say neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. If we are the church at war. Come on, say if we are the church at war. There are some places where you got to draw the line. Move out in the aisle and go talk to somebody else real quick. Or somebody else real quick. Come on, move real quick, real quick. Come on, real quick. Look at them and say neighbor. If we are the church at war. There are some places where you have to draw the line. Come on, go to somebody else who don't look like they want to talk to nobody this morning. Come on, look at them, look at them, look at them in their face. Come on, look at them. Come on, put the Baptist full gospel, oh Lord, Mount Zion Church, hold my mule face. And say, neighbor, oh neighbor, when you had enough, you'll draw the line. Come on back to your seat. I want to talk to you real quick this morning from the subject matter. Draw the line, church at war. Draw the line, church at war. Quickly, let's pray before you take your seat. Father, thank you this morning that there is a master key that will unlock the chains and bondages in our lives. God, thank you this month that you're going to set us free, that you've already set us free. Help us to clearly see, God, that there's a battle going on around us and that we've got to draw the line in our own personal spaces so that we will win this war, oh God. In Jesus' name, somebody's holler, draw the line. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Draw the line, draw the line, uh, draw the line, draw the line. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm sorry. Good morning, Calvary. Come on, good morning, Calvary. Uh, we're getting ready to start this series in our church anniversaries month called The Church at War. And it's important for us to stand, if you, you did not understand, uh, that there is a war going on. How many of y'all know it to be true? There really is a war that is happening. It is happening in the church universal and the body of Christ wide. We are at war. And in this war, what we must make note of is that the war is not against each other. Mm -hmm. The war is not against each other. We as the church must remember who our real enemy is. We must remember and we must know who our real enemy is. For years, the church has been lost in a haze. 
uh, you, would you permit me a, a quick sidebar here? It is interesting as I, I watch the faces of people walking up and down the streets and in many uh, scenarios and situations, it's almost as if like um, many uh, political pundits, uh, whether on one side or the other, would say about certain politicians, it's almost as if like after they speak that there is a haze that comes over the people. Um, it's like there's a haze that's over uh, the eyes of humanity where we are not uh, seeing with clarity and focus of what's happening in our times. Tell somebody we are at war. Uh, we are in a war. We've been lost in a wilderness fighting against each other, church. If I, I could articulate it to you clearly, I would say it like this, that the Methodists have been fighting against the Lutherans. The Anglicans have been fighting against Episcopalians and Protestants fighting against Catholics. Tell somebody, draw the line. It's almost as if the church has been in a war with each other. Maybe that doesn't make too much sense to many of us. I need to come a little closer to home. Uh, if I say it this way, that the Baptists have been fighting against the Pentecostals and Pentecostals, we fighting everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, or the AME Zion is fighting against the AME or the PAW is against Kojic they, we're fighting these archaic battles of well what name do you baptize in Charles do you baptize in Jesus name do you say Father, Son, Holy Ghost what difference does it make the, the real issue is get in the water and come back up transformed hello somebody we're spending too much time fighting over these tributary issues. Maybe I'll come a little bit closer to home. In the church, we're fighting over black worship versus white worship. We're fighting over whether it's an E or it's an E flat or whether it's a C or whether it's strings or whether it's percussion. The point is, as long as God gets the worship, we got to put aside these petty issues of differences that are happening in the world today. We're fighting over whether or not the usher should wear white gloves or have on a black suit or have on a black tie or not. We fight in church over what color the carpet is going to be and whether or not you sitting in my seat or not. Let me make an announcement to you. Don't nobody in here got no assigned seats. The day is coming soon that God is getting ready to move in the earth where there are going to be people who are getting ready to start running back to church. Amen. They're getting ready to come in with earrings in their ears and nose rings and, and, and skirts are going to be too short and not going to smell nice. Some people are going to come straight out the club, alcohol still on their breath, come straight out of the sheets into the house of God and you got to slide your happy sanctimonious hips over and give them some space because we are at war. Somebody shout yes. We got to get back to the point of why we are really here. It's time out for denominations and reformations fighting against each other. At some point, look at somebody and say, we got to draw the line. We are at war with an unseen enemy who operates in the shadows of manipulating the hearts and minds of men and women. He is the original Pied Piper. Uh, he is the original man, if you, would, will, if you will, behind the music. He holds whole groups of denominations, political movements, marching to the beat of the same drum. Our war is against Satan, the devil, Lucifer, the fallen angel, Belial or Baal, the wicked one. He is the twister of truth. We are at war war against him. Tell somebody to draw the line. We are not at war against each other. A part of his mysticism and his illusion of delusion is to get us to fight wars of temporalness against each other. I'm tired. My back hurt. I'm too tired this morning. I don't feel like going to church. But if you could see in the spirit realm uh, the arrows that demonic entities throw against us of what's atmospherically in our environment and the music that is coming against your children. If you could see in the spirit realm the manipulation of multimedia and television that comes through the screen that is designed to get your mind in such a place where you question whether or not God is really with you or not you've got to understand that we are at war we got to get to the place of beginning to put on what the Bible says to get ourselves on with the whole armor of God see the first place that Satan attacks you it's not in the notes but I need to go here real quickly is in your mind and in your thought life got everybody marching to the beat of the same drum which is why the Bible chart says put on the helmet of salvation 
You, you got to get your mind right. Tell somebody to get your mind right. And you got to move and put on the shield of faith. Because there's some things you're going to have to trust God for that don't make sense that you cannot see right now because of the manipulation of the atmosphere that's going on around you. Have you ever walked into your house and figured out what in the world is wrong with my child? It's a war that is going on each and every day. Tell somebody to draw the line. The Bible describes him in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. It's on the screen. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Yeah, the devil goes to church too. Uh, and in many instances, he's occupying many pulpits. He occupies them with preachers who preach watered down words of the gospel where there is no true doctrine so that people live differently on Monday after shouting on Sunday. He masquerades as an angel like 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us this church, be sober. Somebody say be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It's important for me to interject right here. God has no adversary. Yeah. God has no enemy. Satan is not all powerful. He is not omniscient. He does not know everything. He is at war with us. God has no enemies because at the moment that he would try to bring about an insurrection in heaven, Jesus said, I saw him fall to the ground like lightning. He is in the earth manipulating, pulling strings as a Pied Piper, getting movements to operate by his design, all because he is mad and at war with God. Say amen if you can. And this month, I want to recast the vision of this local church. I'm glad we're small in number today, but make sure everybody and their mother gets this DVD that you come into contact with. Pass it to them. Say, on the seventh year, the pastor, he recast the vision of this local church. I want to remind us in this branch of Zion and this local body of believers that we are here to empower people to walk in dominion through the power of Jesus Christ. We are here to open the doors of prisoners who are locked in bondage. God has dispatched us here at this time to be nothing more than conduits and carriers of the anointing that will break people loose and set their lives free. I got to preach this morning simply because there are some of us who came with us here from Norfolk under the wrong pretense. Turn me up into the monitors for the people who are in the hallway who are talking right now while I'm in here preaching who came over here and left Norfolk. We didn't come over here. The bishop didn't send us over here so we could have church so you don't got to drive through the tunnel. The devil is alive. We are on assignment from God. Did you not hear him when he said, I wanted Ray to stay with me and preach for me when I'm not there. I was all right teaching new members class, teaching new believers class. See, I served already like some of you served. I was all right serving at the school and doing those kind of things. You know why? Because I would rather be in an environment where there's revival than get somewhere and play church didn't come over here to play church he dispatched us it's interesting see I gotta tell you some of you people who are new about this sitting in an elders meeting and the elders sit back to me well uh, uh, brother Johnson we know that you're getting ready to launch the ministry and to plant the church and to do uh, what God wants you to do I need to say this because there have been some who've been with us the whole eight years and some who've only been here seven years and some six and some three and maybe this is your first day there have been some who've been with us and some have left people have come and people have gone there's been a shaking that has happened in this church and I need to remind us we got to get back to why we're here we need to get back to why we're here let me say it one more again we need to get back to why we're here we're not here just so we don't have to drive through the tunnel we're not here because it's easier to have service at 10 and not necessarily at 8 that's not why we're here we're here so that people will be empowered with the spirit of dominion so that they can walk in that through the power of Jesus Christ that is why we're here we gather for the purposes of making sure our atmosphere is filled with the glory of God so that when you walk in the door it's all right if you fall out in the floor and the Lord does surgery in your life I got to remind us we're here so that 
and be broken up for people's lives. I got to remind us that we're here so that every alcoholic that doesn't take 12 steps, you can get free in the atmosphere of worship in this place. We're here because of every jacked up marriage that is messed up when the love of God hits this place. We learn how to love God's way and families stay together. We are here so that men can be free and women can be free from bondages that break us down and weigh us down and hold us down so there will be the spirit of dominion to be empowered not to just run in it, not to just shout in it, but to walk in dominion. Oh. God. There's a difference between running in something and walking in something. That means that no matter what happens in my life, no matter what goes on around me, the power of God is so strong with me. <laughs> the power of God is so strong with me that no matter what's going on, you can't steal my praise. Oh, matter of fact, that's a good place to worship right there. Come on, all the dominion walkers, come on, open up your mouth and give the Lord. Oh, God, come on, all the dominion walkers, open up your mouth and give the Lord a praise right here. Oh, God, and I'm out Shandai. Come on, all the dominion walkers, give the Lord glory right here. And I'm out That's why we come. That's why we come. We come because God's trying to put something on us that when you go to your job on Monday, demons start hollering now. Oh God, we, we, that's why we come. We come so that something can get in this environment on us so that when we walk, we get with an apostle, an apostolic anointing on us that demons begin to shriek and begin to holler out, I think it's Jesus. Oh, oh. You might as well preach your here, boy. Look, listen, we're not here to play church. And I want to say this to those of you who've been with us a while. Every now and then, oh God, do I have to go down that road? Every now and then, what happens is the enemy will think he's bringing confusion in the lives of the saints because there's a shaking and a rumbling. Let me go this way, Minister Hudson. Uh, when Gideon got ready to fight the battle against the Midianites, God told him, you got too many folk with you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not in the notes, but I just need to walk here for a second. See, so when you get into a fight against a real devil, you don't have time to be trying to figure out if the person in the foxhole with you knows how to work their gun. Come on, military people. Hello, somebody? When you get in a foxhole and it's time to fight, listen, I need you to hold your section. I'm going to hold my section. You hold your section. And please load your artillery rightly and don't shoot me in the back. So God has to tell Gideon, listen, let me get your attention. You got so many folk with you. The text says, this is not in the notes, but I'm coming around back to the notes in a second. The, the text says that God told Gideon, tell those who lap the water like a dog. Matter of fact, before they got there, everybody who afraid, go home. Look at somebody and say, if you're scared, say you're scared. Tell somebody, draw a line. See, every now and then, there has to be a line in the sand that's drawn. Come on, come on, where are my street folk at? I, I need my street people in here th th this morning. You, you ever been in a fight and, and you got your people with you? You know, you got a whole lot of people that's loud when ain't nobody with them. Those are the kind of folk you want to take to the fight with you. You don't want to take all the loud people that do a whole lot of talking in the lunchroom. You don't need them. You need the people who will just walk up on somebody and swing first and be like, it's on. Come on, I wish I had my folk in here this morning. You're you, you in a battle and in a fight right now. You ain't got time to be worried about somebody's feelings and their emotions. And this one don't like me and I don't like her and I don't like him. And why they didn't smile at me today? No, you need somebody who know how to swing and fight. That's all right. You don't like me. I don't like you. But if you hold your part, I hold my part. Because we got to whip the... Oh, God. <sighs> We are fighting a real devil. That's why the Lord has sent us here. Give the Lord praise right there. Uh, oh, God, help me. See, 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 God wants us to get back to the original mandate and not to be lost in foolishness. Somebody say, don't get lost in foolishness. 
I believe our text this morning speaks to us about God's plan for this local church. Uh, and, and at some point, if we're going to be the church at war on behalf of the city, did you hear what I said? Uh, we need to be at war on behalf of the city. Let me pause right there for a second, because at war on behalf of the city implies something differently. Uh, all of us don't go to war um, when ISIS cuts the fool or when Ahmadinejad or Iran starts acting crazy or the terrorists start bombing the towers at 911. No, there are specially trained forces who gather up to get together to say, you know what, we're going to go and fight on their behalf. <laughs> oh God. Uh, Paul says, I would that you would be able to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And what the Lord's been trying to do with the church is to develop soldiers. Because it's fighting time right about now. Hear me, Jesus is soon to come. And, and what we're fighting for are the souls of men and women to be free on earth way before Jesus come. Victory right now. And so what has to happen even now and then. I'm not in my notes, but pastor, see, I need to go here. Even every now and then, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, uh, that he gave gifts. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Every now and then he sends in a seal team to begin to now take on the specific task of ensuring that they fight on the front lines they operate in clandestine maneuvers operate behind the scenes come on where my seal team people at uh, the, the people that just wait in a corner I wish the devil would not this time not this time not this time and in the text this morning the Lord gives some strategies for how the seal team and everybody else who is on the team is gonna fight in order so that victory will happen in the lives that we represent. And one of the first things in the text uh, that you've got to do if you're going to be on the team or if you're going to be the church at war and draw your line is you got to take Jesus with you from this house to your house. Mm -hmm. You got to take Jesus with you. Look at somebody and say, take Jesus with you. You got to take Jesus with you from this house to your house. We cannot leave Jesus at church. Oh God, we cannot leave Jesus at church. He must come with us to our houses. Much of American Christianity shouts good in here on Sunday, but live like the devil on Monday. Most, much of American Christianity has a lot of form of godliness, but no power. See, I don't know about y'all, but our call is to be a church of power and demonstration. Where there is the genuine power of the unknown. This is why Nate and Autumn spend their time to make sure that the atmosphere is right. Because you can't see it right now. But while I'm speaking and talking to you right now, there are breakings and crackings in the spirit right now. You are coming out of stuff that you don't even know you're getting ready to go into because we are at war. Tell somebody, draw the line, draw the line, draw the line, draw the line. See, 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 the backdrop of the text here is that Jesus had to draw the line in church first. Oh, y'all don't hear me. He had to draw the line in church first because the backdrop of the text is, if you go back and you reread it, just reference it. If you just back up to verses, oh, start around verse 10 and come on in to verse 29, what you'll find is that when Jesus got ready to begin his public ministry, he didn't start out in the streets. He started in the church. The Bible says that judgment will begin at the house of God. Don't get queasy about the word judgment. It just simply means to bring about an end to some things so there can be a new beginning. Somebody say judgment. Judgment just simply means to bring an end so there can be a new beginning. Judgment. Somebody say sentencing. 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 The sentencing is given so that there can be an end of one thing and the beginning of something new. And the Bible says that Jesus stopped through Capernaum and in the church he had to deal with the church first because up in there was a man with an unclean spirit. <laughs> Somebody say draw the line. <laughs> Didn't Jesus say that my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations? So in order for the nations to get access to the prayers, the stuff inside the house has got to get right first. In other words, Jesus is saying, ain't no sense of me trying to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, when inside the house there's an unclean spirit. Oh, can I just tell somebody we're tracking with God that what's just happened with us here, she had to been here a while to know what I'm getting ready to say right now, has been a gully washing. 
has been a gully washing a nice clean out so that we can get ready to now go to war oh I'm prophesying to y'all as a church I'm talking about lesbians getting ready to run to the altar and throw themselves down pornographers and 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 uh, 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 pornographers and polygamists and fornicators and adulterers and people who shoot stuff up in their arms getting ready to put their needles down drug dealers and prostitutes getting ready to come white collar clown people that wear nice suits to work every day and got all kinds of degrees but got all kind of hell going on in their houses getting ready to flood these doors because the power of the living God is getting ready to be made manifest in this place people who are seeking forgiveness and need somebody to wrap their arms around them and love them are going to sense the presence of God because what's in here right now is real now, what's in here is no more playing church, no more patty caking, no trying to figure stuff out, no jockeying for a position. The Lord has done a gully washing and it's getting ready to get real in here. Oh God, come on, that's a good place to worship. Where are my dominion walkers at? Come on, give the Lord some. Oh Jesus. Ooh. Oh God. It's getting ready to, I'm talking about mindsets are getting ready to change. Stuff is getting ready to get broke off your life. You're getting ready to come. I know you're walking through some hell right now. I feel like laying my hands on every last one of y'all right now, looking at me like I got two heads. The presence of God is about to break you out of that prison. Oh, God, help me right here. Look at somebody and say, draw the line, draw the line, draw the line. Look at somebody and say, pass it on, drew the line. Come on, look at somebody and say, pass it on, drew the line. Come on, look at him and say, girl, what done got in him? What done got in him? What done got in him? Jesus. Uh-huh, Jesus. That's what done got in me, Jesus. He's tired of his people being bound up and locked up and messed up. He's ready for his body to be free and for people to walk with the spirit of authority that they already have. It's time. I'm so sick and tired of throwing your money at the altar. Spin around, pour some oil on you, and shout now. No, what you need is a disciplined, regimented life of a God. I worship you this morning. I praise you today. What we need is genuine, real walk with God, like the first century. Look at somebody and say, draw the line. Come on, take your hand like this and just move it back. That's a sign that you are drawn. Devil, no more. Oh, my God. Not another child in this place is going to lose their way. That's getting ready to be a flood of students from Hampton University and Christopher Newport who will not get lost and caught up in the sauce and messed up during their college years. Tell some... There is a generation coming behind us who will not take no for an answer. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here who would give the Lord a praise right there. This is no longer the play church. Tell somebody, draw the line. It's no longer the time to make excuses about being busy. Tell somebody, draw the line. It's no longer the season to play church. Tell somebody, draw the line. It's no longer the season to be ruled with distractions. Tell somebody, draw the line. It's no longer to use the excuse, put the camera on my face. Would you put, zoom in so that on the DVD, they put the camera right on my face, nothing but my face. When you get it there, put a thumbs up, say it's there, it's there, it's there. Oh good, this is no longer the season to make up excuses. Talking about stuff is out of balance. Why you gotta be at church all the time and why you gotta go there all the time? Why? Because there is a devil loose and I'm in the midst of a war and I gotta get to a place where the power of God hits my life because I'm tired of being sick you're tired you gotta get to the house look at somebody and say get to the house get to the house get to the house can I tell you something that is a lie from the devil she's just out of balance just out of church all the time just out of balance and just and I don't feel like it today and there's too much going on and why see I, I don't I, I don't know what's going on today Linda but you you and I we remember back in the day it was prayer meeting on Monday night uh-huh deacon's meeting was on Tuesday Bible study on Wednesday, choir rehearsal on Thursday, all night prayer on Friday, outreach again on Saturday. I want you to know that the real genuine move will not be televised by televangelist preachers. It's going to be in the streets with the people who get back in the house of God. Why? Because the devil is after your children and you all not say nothing to him about he out of balance. You got all kind of hell going at home but want to get mad when the preacher opened the doors to the church. The Lord is trying to set your soul free. Oh God. We 
got to get back to the place where we get in the house of God and get at the altar and say, Lord, this time, not my brother, not my mother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, oh Lord. We got to get back to the place of saying, Lord, don't stop by the sick room. Stop by my house. Stop by my bedroom. Stop by my money. God, I need you right now. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know which way it's coming. See, I got to let you know that there is real war out there. See, what's getting ready to hit the earth right now is going to make you run to the altar. You think AIDS was something? There is real stuff coming to the earth. Oh, that's just a little tributary right there. But there is real pestilence and disease. Famine is on its way back. But I don't know about y'all. I love the Bible. <laughs> Now the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord, oh Jesus, I hear the scripture, the Lord getting ready to lift up a standard. The real saints are getting ready to walk in a glory that comes from the Lord. When everybody else is losing their jobs, the saints going to be making money from everywhere. When everybody else is falling out, the saints are going to walk healed and whole. All because they got to the house. You know what the real issue is? You Not so much you get to the house, but the house has got to go to your house. But what's in the house can't get to your house until you get your hips in the house. Tell somebody, draw the line. Uh-huh, I would go somewhere else. I would just have a prerogative and go somewhere else. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the old preacher done showed up. Oh, help me. Oh, God. Somebody better come get me. Oh, God. You got people that want to stand back here and tell you how to live, and you get to the house more than they do. What kind of foolishness is that? How you gonna have power with something that you don't have? We gotta get rid of this form of godliness. Uh, all I'm clean mind if I'm use me and you for a minute. I get here every Sunday morning uh, about eight o'clock. I lay on my face. I pray. I seek God because I want to know, Lord. It's not so much in what I say, but it's in what I do. Oh shoot. Uh huh. Uh, Lord, fill me with your presence so that your people get you that can keep them till the next time we gather. See, that's, that's what first century, put the camera on my face. Put the camera on my face, please. See, first century ministry is not how we, I appreciate the fact that some folk come and came because I'm multi-degree. Yeah, I really do have five earned degrees, but five earned degrees don't have no power. Huh? Put the camera on my face. What is going to move stuff is genuine power with God. So what I do is I lay on my face till I get power. So that when you walk in here with your crack addicted self and you get close enough to me, what's on me is going to... Oh, I wish... Oh, I'm about to run over the thing. It will break your life free. Oh, God. And you can't have people trying to uh, d d exegete and be didactic in the scripture. And it's good to have euphemism and great metaphors. Oh, I can preach with the best of them too. I do all of that too. Come on. Those who've been around here a while, you know, I got first letters that match. All that great stuff is great. But if it don't have no power that keeps you on Tuesday, will somebody shout yes? Say, Lord, give me power. Come on, say, Lord. Give me power. Come on, say, Lord. Give me power. Somebody say, draw the line. Draw the line. I want power with God. Draw the line. I want power with God. Draw the line. I want power. Oh, God. We just told you. Listen. 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 Autumn Clay. Wesley and a few others, they at this altar praying. Why we ask you to get to the church early? So that you can pray for the homosexual that's on their way to get broken out of their homosexuality. You don't know whose marriage is in trouble. You don't know who got about to get a divorce. But if your power ever matches up with my power, and my power ever matches up with your power, and if our power matches up with his power, the Bible says suddenly, when they were all in one place, 
on one accord I feel like preaching now the Bible said suddenly I don't know about y'all Linda I don't know when the flood is coming DK I don't know how it's coming but I do believe I heard from the Lord there is power that is coming to this church there is power that's getting ready to break every life free would you give them a praise right there oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus see not only must Jesus go home with you but when Jesus goes home with you there will be healing in your house uh huh that's why you gotta get to the house somebody say healing in my house and I I'll try to just be delicate right here oh Mm. Lord, how I do that? Oh. Oh. Mm. Yeah. No, 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 no. My mother's here. I got to be. I got to be delicate. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Cause she try try throw something at me. Uh. See, if you, oh shoot, you in church praying. I'll use me as an example. That's a good place to go. My parents were elders. They laying on their, ooh, shake that mm. They would be in church praying, laying at the altar, and me and my homeboys would be in the back of the service pencil fighting, making fun of the tongues and the laying in the floor and the shouting and all of that until one day the Holy Ghost, ooh, Jesus, grabbed me in the back of the service and said come here there's a call of God on your life see if you get your teenagers around here they will stop sexting their friends if you get every 18 and 19 year old around here you won't have to waste time trying to figure out how to create the pre to create the outcome and the behavior no the behavior is what it is because of the war somebody say the war there's an atmospheric war that's going on and your child is sick and you don't know it. Okay. That they're, they're sick with the cultural isms of the day. But if you get in here long enough, what will happen is the power of the Holy Ghost will grab your 16 year old and they won't sex their friends. You praying and they let, okay, I might as well keep it real. You at work, working hard, praying, and they at home sleeping with somebody in your bed. Huh? We got to get back to the place where there is something that arrests you by the Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Somebody say, draw the line. See, 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 where you get all that from, Pastor? Where you get all that from? Well, it's, it's in the text, because in the text, uh, they just left church, dealt with an unclean spirit, and in the text, they got to uh, Simon Peter's wife's mother. Simon Peter's wife's mother. Simon, who is Peter, with Andrew, James, and the rest of them are with Jesus in church. But it is Peter's wife's mom that gets an illness with a spirit of infirmity. Can, can I go somewhere down that right quick? I might as well teach here since I'm here. Which is to say that they were the disciples who were with Jesus. But every now and then there are some disciples who got to get rid of a spirit of infirmity that's on them. Huh? So, some of us who, who claim to be with Jesus, we got to get free first too. Oh, y'all don't want to. Oh. It just says speaking in tongues and sick. Laying hands on folks, sick. Uh, quoting the scripture and sick. Just messed up, tore up on the floor. God is trying to help us disciples first. Oh, Jesus. If the, oh, the disciples got to get free first so that the new believer can get free. You can't, uh, you, the new believer's sick and we sick. All of us up in here sick together. The devil is a lie. Somebody in here going to get well and be made whole. Okay, I'm doing too much hollering. It's time to teach for a little bit. See, 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 church, we can't be sick. We can't be a church who heals if we are in here sick. Weak, anemic, with no power from God. The church must be the church of power. Can I go somewhere and mess up a whole lot of preacher's theology right here? Put the camera on my face again. I'm sorry. Zoom in. Give me the thumbs up when they got it on my face. Listen, Reverend. The church 
is not a hospital. Stop misquoting the text, preacher. The church is not a hospital. There's only one reference in all of scripture with Jesus talking about the church being a place for sick people, for sinners. Oh, I need to walk down there. Because the church is the ecclesia, the called out ones. The church is an army. Camera on my face. Reverend, the church is an army. We are the extension of God on the earth. We are extensions of the Lord of hosts. If I went to Titus preacher, I would tell you that the church is supposed to be the first defenders of the faith. Which simply means that what we are is an infantry ward. <laughs> We're an infantry ward. In other words, there are going to be some times where you're going to get bruised in the battle. You're going to get scarred in the battle. <laughs> But on a Wednesday night, there is some surgery that can happen to help heal your soul. Where you can take time and get healed. And what the church is supposed to do is to become a mechanism that helps you get healed and get back out there and keep on fighting. Oh, God. See, 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 I, I like David and his mighty men. There, there, there was one of them, Oshimei, who said that uh, he fought so strong that the sword, this is going to make sense to somebody in a minute, got stuck to his hand, killed about a thousand and some Philistines all by himself. Just swinging, said, no, 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 David, I got this one. You go head on and you stay there in the cave. I'm going to handle this myself. And the sword, the Bible says, got fused with his hand. So, so much so where you couldn't tell where his hand began and where the sword ended or where the sword ended and his hand began. And he just started swinging and killing Philistines all by himself. And what God needs today are some of Shimei's who got the word of God, the sword of the spirit, tatched up into their hand. And every time the devil starts acting up, word comes out of their mouth. And they, oh, Jesus, somebody give the Lord a praise right there. Oh, shoot. I got to go home. See, see. We gather to heal the sick and to send the healed. Hear me. We gather to heal the sick and send the healed back out to war. Write that down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Write that down. Don't be entertained. Uh, we gather every week to heal the sick. It doesn't mean the sick can't come. We want the sick here. It's not even all my hollering I'm doing right now. But it's that word that will pierce through the soul and the spirit that will heal the sickness in the body of your mind so that when you walk out of here, okay, by show of hands, how many of you, when you get into something on a Thursday or a Tuesday or a Friday, you start hearing that word? Mm -hmm. Okay, now keep your hand up. How many of you start hearing a word I preached? That's why you got to gather in here. So you're going to hear this right around March 17th and 18th. Oh, wait a minute. Shoot, I'm in a war. Oh, no weapon formed against me. Oh, you're going to start hearing. Okay, let's go on. Somebody say, somebody say, in the church, there's a war. Say, take Jesus from this house to your house so that you can get healed. See, Mark 2 and 17, Jesus heard it. He said to them, those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The church is not a place where you get sick to stay sick. It's a place where you are to get well because of repentance. Quick sidebar, a lot of times we're not made well because we're not willing to repent. Sit up in here Sunday after Sunday, oh, the time is gone. Y'all all right? I'm good. Uh, sit up in here Sunday after Sunday, week after week, and don't get healed. It ain't got nothing to do with the physician or the medicine. It's got everything to do with our ability to say, Lord, yeah, mm, that was me. I'm sorry, I repent, Jesus, forgive me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. When you do that healing, the serum starts to flow. The serum starts to flow. And if you can just say, Lord, please forgive me. I, I was wrong. Ooh, I heard that thought. You don't know what I've been through and what I've been going through. No, and don't care. But if you get some of this scissor up I got, oh, God, you, you, you will get healed 
And the medicine will start working if you just say, Lord, that was me. I'm sorry. I repent. It's over. Come on, say, Lord, that was me. I'm sorry. I repent. And it's over. Lord, that was me. I'm sorry. I repent. And it's over. Why? Repent just simply means I changed my mind. Devil, I changed my mind. See, we got to get this. I keep saying it every week. You are not who they say you are. You may have done what they say you did, but that's not who you are. Say amen if you can. Okay, let me get on to the next one. Let me just hop, skip, and jump because the time is getting ready to go on away from here. Somebody say draw a line. If your daddy wasn't there, you got to draw a line. If your mama wasn't there, you got to draw a line. If life passed you by and you didn't get the opportunities that you wanted, Build a bridge and draw a line and get over it. Bad stuff happens to good people all the time. But you can't stay bound up in a cell because you got to get out and fight in the war and pull somebody else out of their cell. Somebody say, draw a line. I didn't get the education I wanted. Draw a line. I didn't get the loan that I wanted. Draw a line. The marriage didn't work the first time around. Draw a line. I can't seem to break the sickness. Draw a line. I know I said I never was going to do it again, but here I am again. Get yourself up. Dust yourself off. Stand up. Draw a line. Come on, let me get through it. Somebody say the master's hand. See, 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 when you go from the place of taking Jesus to your house, there will be healing. But there are some moments when you can get so sick with a fever like this woman was. Uh, she was so sick with a fever. And I know a lot of times people say, if you could ever put your hand in the master's hand, everything will be all right. But what about when you're so sick you can't lift up your hand? Huh? That's the text. They tell Jesus that she is so ill. Uh, Jesus, she can't even come to you. But I love the text because Jesus says, I'm going to go right to where she is. Have you ever been so ailed in your life and so sick with so much stuff that goes on in the world around us that all of a sudden, you, you know, you can't even get yourself up off the floor? For somebody, that's literal and it's physical. Were you in such a, a, a disarray where you cannot get yourself up off of the floor? Have you ever had life happen to you so bad uh, that it messes with you so much that you can't even pick your head up? That there's so much oppression that comes against you where there's stuff that your mind is fighting against you. Your body is fighting against you. Your money ain't working right. People, you, the people are trying to give you encouragement, but their words of criticism are just beating you down into the floor and you got a woe is me attitude. See, I understand. I know what it's like to be in them kind of moments where it's darkness on the outside and darkness on the inside and to be so lost and so messed up and you praying for all you worth and heaven is silent and nobody is, that's when you need Jesus to come by and say I know you can't put your hand in my hand but come here give me your hand oh I feel like preaching right here because we have not a God who has not yet been felt with all of our infirmities who feels everything that we feel who goes through has been through everything that we are going through Jesus has compassion on this woman and he picks up her hand and the Bible says not five Bible studies later the Bible says that as soon as he touched her hand the spirit of affirmatively immediately left her body if you would ever let Jesus touch your hand oh God if you would ever let Jesus just touch so too many of us keep do, <laughs> You want to have a pity party. You want to be mad. But every now and then, you're going to have to let that hand go. And you're going to have to let Jesus put his hand around that hand and say, Come here, I got a plan for your life. Come here, I plan to use you. Come here, I plan to work it out for you. Come here, I plan to turn that thing around. If you will ever let Jesus put his hand on your hand, I promise, oh God, I promise you it will all change. Somebody give the Lord glory right there. Okay, look here, look here, look here. Text says that immediately, uh huh. See, this is what messes us up in church. Can I, can I just talk right here for a minute? We're going home. Can I have five more minutes? I know I'm way past time. Uh, but uh, somebody said, You sure are. That's all right. I'm going to keep right on preaching, too. Uh huh. Because this is, this is some scissor up that's help. I'm sorry. This is syrup medicine. Nice uh, NyQuil with some codeine in it. Mm. I promise you, you'll be high by Tuesday. 
and you'll be numb to what's getting ready to happen in your life. Ooh, I Reverend, you just said something right there. You did. Look here. One of the ways that we're able to draw a line is if we handle it for Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. If we handle it for Jesus, that's one of the ways we're able to draw a line. Can I, can I tell you why the church, the body of Christ at wide? I heard one of our members put something on Facebook the other day about that there was a ministry uh, that decided to adopt uh, a young lady that was getting out of foster care and they decided to take her in and there were so many number of foster care children. I know I served on the state board and I know that our area has one of the highest regions, not, not even our area, our two cities in our area make up the highest population of those who are in the foster care system in Newport News and in Hampton. Not only do we got the highest number of foster care children that are in the system, which are overwhelmingly female and not male, um, not only do we have the highest number of that, but we're in Newport News is tied for number one in the region for human trafficking. Where are all the human traffickers getting all these young people from? Those who have emancipated and have been in foster care and those who had to grow up in the system whose parents have let them walk out of the house. They are taking these young ladies and they're just prostituting them and pimping them out. But I have made up my mind and I told the Lord not on my watch. And oh, you didn't hear what I said. Not on my watch. Not why I got a little while longer left to stand here in this pulpit and not just preach but do something. Somebody holler, do something. Look at somebody and say, handle it. See, in the text of Scripture, this young lady, she decides to not let somebody else do it, but she decides to handle it herself. How you know, Reverend? Because the text of Scripture goes on to say that uh, she began to serve them immediately. Ooh, she got healed and she started serving. She got healed and she started meeting the need and handling whatever the need was of the ministry that Jesus had. She started waiting tables. Where can I serve? What can I do? See, she didn't got healed now, but there is too much of people getting healed in church and then sit back and fold up their arms. And I wonder what they're going to do about that. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. Decide that you ain't going to get, go. you will give Walmart every discount sale you got, but won't put $2.50 in the offering to fix nothing so that the ministry can meet the needs of people. I got to go here because it's anniversary month. I is the rem around here. I understand. See, my wife don't like to talk about this while she's standing in the back. But see, she don't like me to say nothing about this because she want me to say nice and delicate and smile. And I'm smiling. I just want to have a real honest conversation. Visitors, I'm not talking to you. God bless you for coming. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, but this part does not uh, pertain to you. Just zone out. Go ahead. Look at your phone. Get on Facebook. <laughs> you think I'm praying? Go on. Get on your face. Uh, get, 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 just get on Facebook, and, but just make sure you check in while you're there. I really do know how to market. Um, and we'll get upset. Want to ask Pastor the kid, can you print out a financial report? And their giving done gone down. Somebody say, handle it. See, when this woman got healed in the text of Scripture, it's not always about money. Somebody got to usher on the door. Somebody got to do Christian education. Somebody got to work in Nehemiah's nook and feed the homeless. Somebody got to bring some extra clothes. Somebody got to teach a class. Somebody got to follow up with people. Somebody say, handle it. <laughs> to God, I'm asking the Lord, let me get to the place where I can start calling out what the need is, God, so that we can do something in our city. And somebody from the pew rises up and say, Pastor, you ain't got to worry about that because we going to handle it. <laughs> to God, that we can get to the place where we can spend some money on a men's home. How much is it going to cost, Pastor? Oh, it's about $225,000 sitting on our property over there. Been there for the last eight years, but can't nobody buy it because we own the parking space. Look at somebody and say, we going to handle it. Oh, I wish we could raise up a women's home, partner with House to Esther, so that Pastor Janine could have a place for some of these teenage girls who get pregnant a little bit too soon, and we could take care of the bill and the utilities, and all they need is a place to stay, but it's going to cost some money. Somebody say, handle it. I wish I could get to the place where I could just open my mouth and say, Pastor, you ain't got to worry about it. We going to handle that. Somebody say, handle it. What you mean? What we going to handle? The fact that we can begin to start getting some of these dollar 
houses, fixing them up, giving away sweat equity so that the homeless men that live in our men's shelter can use that to work off the sweat equity for their down payment and close the cost assistance and find a place to live. Somebody say handle it. I wish I could say handle it and go up to the third floor and repair the third floor so that it could become a music studio and a job co-op for our teenagers and our gifted people don't got to go to the world to sign with ungodly record labels but can make their music in the church produce their albums and still live clean and holy somebody say handle it I to God that we could raise up a school for African American boys and girls and not let them come together until lunchtime so they properly know how to begin to associate with each other so that people will stop sleeping with each other and having too many kids out of wedlock because now we know how to have character and to treat each other with decency. Somebody say, I can handle that. Would you give the Lord a praise right there? She didn't wait. She said, whatever needs to be done, Reverend, I'm going to do it. I got that. See, I believe God's going to bless some of y'all so much so. Oh, it's already in the house. I done got a wit. It's in the house. Where, where, where it's, it's, it's one or two of y'all can take care of everything around here right now. I'm prophesying to somebody. You see, see the, the, see, see the flatness. Just, so you, 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 you caught it. You caught it. You caught it. And, in other words, if I got enough to take care of what's going on in here, everything I got is already taken care of. Ooh, that means you load it. Oh, I might as well preach like I feel it. Some of you entrepreneurs getting ready to be loaded. Oh, you getting ready to be loaded because your heart is right with God. See, I need to go here for the skeptics. I need to go here for the skeptics. Everything that we said we were going to do, have we not done it? When I said, that, when I said we were going to fix the column, did we not fix the column? When I said we were going to repair Nehemiah's nook, did we not repair Nehemiah's nook? When I said we were going to paint and fix up the building to add technology, would you look around in this 18th century building with 21st century stuff in here? Everything, which is why the people over there sitting over there can hear me right now in the service. Everything I said we were going to do, we were going to do it. But we got to get to the point where we start handling stuff. See, can I close this message right here? I really want to holler, but I just need to talk because I'm tired. I mean, I can, ooh, yeah, I can do that, but I'm tired. I ain't tired for all that right now. Because when she started handling, watch the symmetry of the text. Preachers, watch me. Watch the symmetry of the text. It is not the whole city when they leave the synagogue. It's not the whole city when she gets healed from the Spirit. It's not the whole city when the disciples are with Jesus. Some of us in here are disciples and we with him. It is the whole city when she starts serving him. I wonder why. Because I wonder who else, it's not necessarily in the text, but it's implied. I wonder who else knew that Simon Peter's mother was sick. See, anything that is written in scripture, there is a critical point of emphasis to it that brings about some kind of magnanimous revelation to us to understand why the Holy Spirit would have the writers write it. And the Holy Spirit had the writers, had Mark write specifically that it was Simon Peter's mother his wife's mother who was sick. I wonder who else in the city knew she was sick. I wonder how bad she was sick. She was so sick that this word here, uh, uh, fever in the scripture, means an inferno of a flame that spreads. See, I, I didn't get a chance to give it to you in the Greek. You go back and watch the notes, it's there. It means an inflamed inferno that spreads. She's so sick that she's mad. Ooh, you ever been so sick that you're just mad and don't know why? Just mad on the inside, just mad, just ticked off mad. Or you ever met somebody just attitude, just bad? Don't even know why they just, just nasty, just nasty, mean, nasty, because they're sick. Jesus heals the sickness. And I wonder who else in the city knew? Why you ask that question, preacher? Because the Bible says, and they brought all, look at the text, whole city <laughs> was gathered at the door of the steps of Simon Peter's mother's wife's house. I wonder who she was in the city when she got healed. Oh, I'm getting ready to prophesy to you. 23607 zip code, I used to ask, God, why don't you send me to the northern part of the city? And the Lord would just be quiet. I'm going to send you there. You're going. 
God, why, why you won't send me the 23666? That's what it's going to take financially to plant this church. God, why? I'm going to send you there. Just be quiet. See, some of us think that the, the stuff with my memorial is over. We're still going to Hampton. Sure as my name is Raymond Johnson, we're still going. But it's going to be God's bill and not ours. We're still going to the northern part of the city, but it's going to be God's bill, not ours. But in 23607, the Lord had to take me back, Pastor McKee, and remind me through my study of demographic study. Every kind of social ill of a statistic is within the radius block of 23607. And he put us here first to gather the city. Look at your Bible. Look at it. Don't look at me. Look at your Bible. The Bible says that all who are sick, all who are distressed, here's a big one, all who were filled with demons gathered at the porch. Why? Because Jesus was there. And the word got out that Simon Peter's mother got healed. I just want to prophesy and lift up my voice. The word is getting out about you, Calvary, that somebody around here is getting healed. You get ready. Th those of you who got delivered from certain things in your life, you know what they are. I ain't got to call them all out. The Lord's going to have you open up your mouth. Some of you too quiet. You need to... St <laughs> Which is why you got to get here so that you can get the power. Here is, here's the closing point. I'm getting ready to leave right here. Here's the closing point. What got a hold of her got a hold of the whole city so that the city was made whole. Oh, God. What got a hold of her got a hold of the city so that the city was made whole. I'm going to say it one more time. Calvary, what gets a hold of you it's getting ready to get a hold of Hampton and Newport News and Williamsburg and Yorktown and Jamestown and Surrey and Smithville so that the region can be made whole. Can I go a little deeper? Norfolk has done their part. Chesapeake is doing theirs. What are we going to do? Huh? What are we going to do? Everybody's standing. It's time to go home. Three things I need to say. And then we're out of here. Uh, maybe you're sick this morning because you don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sin. This altar is over for you. You made up your mind this morning. I'm going to get a hold of Jesus today. As soon as they open up the altar for people to come. Come on, lift up your hands. Start worshiping him. And that's you. That's you. Just move quickly right now. Move past the person beside you. Say, I need to get down there. I don't know Jesus and the pardoning of my sin. I got some sickness that's going on with me. I need.